the, the, the political cast of state, well, both, both Congress and state legislatures, mm -hmm. and it would, the, everything has a, I, I would say shadow side, except I mean the good side. That's the shadow side. Yeah. It would be <laughs> almost a, having to go back to square one. Inconceivable to do that. But yeah. the um, sunny side of that is if the Equal Rights Amendment could be used as an organizing tool in all those states and in at the federal level, and if people, women and men, used the ERA not as a litmus test, knee-jerk, whatever, but as an indicator of where legislators are on the spectrum of do you support the worldview that's equality and justice or do you support the worldview that's hierarchical dominant? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a little too esoteric for a political campaign button, to put it that way. <laughs> but but you can, you can that's it what out. it could be about. <laughs> and if it's about that, and given the demographics and given that the younger generations are becoming more liberal and uh, et cetera, um, it would be very, very hard work, but it might be a way to start having that pendulum swing back mm -hmm. in the other direction, away from the uh, mm -hmm. you know, conservative, Tea Party, I, I call them our modern day know nothing uh, politicians. Yeah. Um, well, it's a, it, now might be a nice time to do it, you know, to, to energize that kind of a movement around the ERA because you can see how um, strident these conservative organizations yes. and what they call the conservative grassroots are in terms of rolling back. Yes. Um, rights, access to care, etc. that women mm -hmm. have had for a generation now, yes. right? A generation and a half Several, has gone yeah. by since, yeah. you know, 1973. Roe v. Wade Right, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, and uh, oh. and um, uh, you know, you can't imagine right now in mm -hmm. America's political culture a situation where rights that we're used to having, you know, I tell people, yes, your checking account as oh, a woman yes. in your name, yes. that could go away. <laughs> it was you know, not possible. Funding for yeah. your education and your sports teams and yes. your that could go mm -hmm. away. You know, the idea that um, you should be hired when you're equal with a man, mm -hmm. right? In terms of applying for a job, you should be hired on your merits, not because he's male should he be hired, not because you're female should you be hired. These things can all evaporate because there's no grounding for them. In the Constitution, and the ERA would be that that foundation stone. From your you lips. Know? So we have we have a wall, right? Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> but that stone that would keep it from falling down isn't there. Oh, you know, yeah, we built it backwards. You know, image. the poetry in you, poet poet in you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like or a bridge with no keystone, an arch yes. with no keystones, yes. right? Yes. It can't stay up for. Well, and even long. the things that we do have now, legislation, which of course can be overturned by another simple majority vote. Uh, the, the legislation we have, a lot of good legislation in place, not with complete enforcement still, Equal Pay Act and all of that sort of thing, and also the, I'll say transient nature, at least it doesn't take too much to overturn that as it would to overturn a constitutional amendment or, yes. or replace yes. a, a constitutional amendment. And as it stands, yeah. the burden is on the individual woman to yeah. force a corporation, right, or her boss or her manager or whatever, to give her the right that she has, right? There's no she has to litigate if on she's the, not getting it right. She's, right, she's got to yeah. hire a lawyer. You know, yeah. that's not exactly a right so much as just an opportunity to get your money. Yeah, you know, <laughs> a right happens. You know, when a right is instantiated, that corporation is on the hook for making sure that that right is observed for all of its work. I used to think that it's a little more uh, tricky. I mean, it would be most of those rights are under Fourteenth Amendment equal protection. Uh, Etc. And in in some cases, it is the um, actor who's mm. liable or has the burden of proof, if you will. I don't know. I'm I'm not a lawyer, but I play one on the Equal Rights Amendment. There you but, go. Um, <laughs> I yeah. uh, it's not as easy. I used to say the burden of proof was on the individual woman. I think it's a little more subtle than that. But it's definitely the point is absolutely well taken, which is it requires initiative on the part of the one discriminated against. Mm -hmm. um, and so the big difference if we had an Equal Rights Amendment, from my understanding, would be, first of all, it would be very, very much a shot across the bow of people 
and corporations who would want to continue to discriminate, mm -hmm. uh, and governments particularly, because the ERA, it's, it's limitation, although I'll take it as a great step forward, is that it prohibits state actions, quality of rights under the law, pro mm -hmm. prohibits actions under the law to deny uh, equality of rights. Right. Um, so it's a necessary and yet probably not sufficient step forward. Um, but the point is that um, if that were in the Constitution, then it's a real shot across the bow of corporations governments who would want to pass the kinds of laws we're seeing passed in states right now, which are about women's health, saying that clinics who serve women for their re reproductive health must have corridors eight feet wide and this and this and this. I don't know how trap, those things... I don't, trap, exactly. Mm -hmm. what, uh, I forget what that stands for. But, uh, <laughs> but um, it, it spells trap. Access to, <laughs> you know, access, access to these facilities. Mm -hmm. um, I find... I can't imagine those would be impossible to uphold if we had state equal rights, I mean, the federal equal rights amendment, or even some of the states where this is happening. I'm not sure that I've ever correlated those worst laws with do they have a state ERA, but then you need someone to file a suit. You need someone to file suit. And, and well, Virginia. If, if Virginia has a state ERA. Yeah. That's right. Why am I saying good that? Good yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but it, you know, if, if you had an equal rights amendment like that and say a state wanted to institute those kinds of trap regulations, they would probably also have to apply to dentist offices, That's the point. places yes. that do vasectomies, yes. you know, That's any it. place where anybody cuts you, That's might right. need to put a band-aid on you, would have to be, yes. you know, to hospital standard or have access to a hospital. And I mean, it would put almost every private yeah. physician in the country out of business yeah. and they would rise up and go, you can't. You well, know? the thing about uh, doctors who do abortions need to have admitting, uh, yeah. oh, admitting word? privileges. Privileges, so, like yeah, thinking about facility, hospital. But admitting privileges at a hospital within 30 miles. Right. Do they say that about physicians doing vasectomies? No. no. Uh, I don't see how those even stand up now under a state ERA, but I, I know groups like Center for Reproductive Rights are doing a dynamic job of litigating and uh, asking for stays on some of these yeah. worst laws. Or, uh, yeah, they're yeah. fighting really hard. They're fighting very hard in Virginia. Yeah. We're still kind of going round and round about that. Yes. Down there. But again, it goes back to, uh, doesn't have to be all women that we put into office, but men and women with the right uh, policies in mind that they want to support. I mm -hmm. think it's so critical that we look at uh, how we deal with um, supporting the right candidates to get into these offices where they're pushing the buttons to make the votes, mm -hmm. which gets into uh, so many other things, including the way the 2010 census, um, when which prompted the last redistricting in states, mm -hmm. created such a horrible opportunity. I'll, editorialize for Republicans who, <laughs> oh, when you peel the layers of the onion off, it just <laughs> makes you cry more and more. There's a good poetic <laughs> metaphor. Onions, yeah. that. <laughs> Onions will do that. <laughs> but the Republicans held more state houses and legislatures in 2010 because of the whole backlash. I mean, I think after Obama was elected in 2008 and the, uh, you know, the awful, it's usually a bit of a, rebound yeah. against the president who was elected two years earlier yeah, anyway, but this was five just... Minutes after the election. And don't, don't push my, uh, you know, this goes back to pushing my racial justice button. Mm -hmm. I think so much mm -hmm. of it is just a very I thin mask this for... president fail. Yes. I'm like, I will dive bomb America in That's order right. to make that man go down with a exactly. black mark in history. Exactly. I'm like, what is... This? Well, we know. It's the old worldview, which doesn't only keep women down, it keeps people of color down. Yes. So uh, it, it, it's uh, nothing that happens quickly. We know such things don't happen quickly. We know that the vast majority of the mushy middle, if you will, mm -hmm. um, has to live with something for a while. Yeah. And then get used to it. And that to go back to um, the issue of uh, LGBT rights and just what's happened, which I think is astonishing. I mean, again, as I say, hooray, but it's it's a, an issue that's not directly in line with the Equal Rights Amendment issue. The Equal Rights Amendment is about 
it's not disconnected from, mm -hmm. but it's not fully on the same yeah. track. The Equal Rights Amendment says, and again, I'll fill in a lacuna that I left when I talked mm -hmm. about the history of it. Yeah, the original wording about women and men shall have equal rights was changed by Alice Paul, written by her in 1943, to say equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. It no longer says names women and men. Mm -hmm. It says you can't abridge rights on account of sex. That models completely two other previous amendments. 19th Amendment, the right to vote shall not be denied on account of sex. Right to vote, dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. Shall not be denied on account of sex. Which was modeled on the 15th Amendment, which said the right to vote shall not be denied on account of, didn't use the word sex, but it said race, color, or previous condition of servitude. Yes. Which was to grant the vote to... Uh, extend the voting rights to, I don't know, I don't like to say the vote was given to anybody they fought long yeah, and hard for. To extend the franchise. To, to extend the franchise <laughs> to um, the male freed uh, victims of slavery. Yeah. And so um, that equality rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged is language. Sex was taken from the 19th Amendment. The opponents said, oh, well, that, of course, what that means is they're saying, you know, sex means two people of the same sex can get married, or this or this or this, which has never <laughs> been... It's supposed to be biological sex. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> sex sex yeah. does mean... Um, it doesn't Your mean biology, that. yes. Yeah. It, it can be your external appearance, your internal appearance, your hormones, your chromosomes, whatever. But sex is about biology. Mm -hmm. Gender, and some people, I think trying to be helpful, not to try trying to be subversive, said, well, if he just changed that word to gender, it would not feel so, whatever. What, not realizing what I would contend, which is, if you're really against, I'll use gay rights as shorthand, if you're against that, you don't want the word gender in there, because then you would be saying you can't discriminate on the basis of gender, which has a much broader application of cultural presentation of sexuality, mm -hmm. the way people behave relative to what biology, biological sex yeah. they are at a given moment. Yeah. Um, how people All of which inhabit is, their bodies yes, and their it, gender identity. That's right. What, how they identify. Talking yeah. about sexual identity. How yeah. they identify. What sex they identify as. What gender they do, if you will. Present. Present. And these don't always go together. And they don't always go together. <laughs> and and yeah. hey, that's, that's life too. It's yeah. always been life. It's just that we are much more, thank goodness, um, naming of reality. Mm -hmm. Bef and, and the burden that fell on people who were not at the poles of male sex performing male gender and female sex performing female gender, mm -hmm. everybody, how many people we have no idea, falling in between those poles have borne a horrible bur burden yeah. over the centuries. Well, just the insults, you know, sissy and tomboy, yes. right, that yeah. kids used to throw at each other tells you that if you... You know, if you have, if you sort of blend, if you cross over a little bit, even in just the things you're interested in doing in life, oh, yes. a girl who can throw yep. a baseball properly, yep. you know, um, you know, th there there are assumptions about your sexuality, about your yeah. about your gender, about your place in the world, your attitude about life that that are really policing, you know, gender policing, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. you know, and so yeah, gender th putting the term gender in there gets you into a different kind of complication. Mm -hmm. Um, but I find that very fascinating too. I never was involved in, I must admit, just again, growing up as I did, um, did not have the same gut reaction against racial injustice. Not because I didn't think there should be justice, it was never that I wasn't for justice around sexuality, it was that it didn't somehow push the same button internally that ERA and racial justice pushed for me. But the more I have, have worked over the last couple decades, particularly, um, first of all, how you know how happy I am that we're moving forward and ju on justice in that area too, but also realizing that more than I knew, the discrimination around sexuality is an absolute essential for maintaining sex discrimination based on the old dyad of yeah. male female. Yeah. You can't. You can't keep the male-female dominant, the male dominance going nearly as well 
if you don't actually know where everybody falls on those two yeah. between those two poles. Yeah. And really, if you don't punish deviation. And if you don't punish deviation. The system yes. must punish deviation. I think it was in order to yeah. maintain itself. Suzanne Farr was a person who wrote a book I think called Homophobia probably 15 or more years ago mm -hmm. which when I read that I thought oh my goodness yes it's all of a piece. Yeah yeah it really is. These aren't separate systems you yeah. know they're really integrated and and you kind of have to attack it at all of those levels at the same time. Yes. You know, because yes. it's too strong if yeah. you just go for one of them. But I think, I, and one of the things I find fascinating is how wonderfully quickly we've reached and perhaps passed the tipping point hmm. on same-sex marriage. Um, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I, I, unexpectedly <laughs> to me, because both with... Um, political and in a few cases in states court decisions, but also public opinion has been just, again, an amazing, um, to me in the last, I'll say 10 years, I don't know exactly, but just quite amazing that mm -hmm. it's, it's shifted so quickly. Mm -hmm. So it, it may have, I don't know how, how I would think that would help, it certainly doesn't hurt at all with the Equal Rights Amendment, but whether people getting used to the idea of breaking down these traditional uh, constructs maybe helps with the ERA as we get more political traction too. It may. It not may going you know, something. As people get used to a new, a slightly new form of life, you know, mm -hmm. um, they might get used to yet another yeah. form of life. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to me how, you know, people predicted you would end discrimination against women, this would lead to, you know, gay marriage, to acceptance of, of a wider sort of swath of ways of being a human mm -hmm. um, and yet it seems to be that we're going to work our way out to the you know from the margins to the middle we're going <laughs> to uh, you know work all of these you know ways of being a human being are going to become more accepted and common and understood yes. and then we're going to go oh yeah you know women oh, yeah. <laughs> participate uh, oh, yeah. in all of these things <laughs> we might as well Sonia Johnson well the, the ERA <laughs> advocate to from Virginia when yeah. she was doing a lot of her work um said, and she wrote something that I, and I heard her say it in speeches too, but it just, just was so good, you know, that, that women are basically saying, let's just, this is simple equality, let's just do it, and they're told, well, just wait till we take care of this, wait till we take care of that war, wait till we take care of, you know, that technological problem. What, what, what she said, women have always been told to wait, we're going to be told to wait till the sun burns out, or, you know, just, yeah. the point is, there will always be something that we're being asked to get behind. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, yeah. take a place in line behind. Yeah. And um, we get impatient, we get very impatient, and we do our best, but there's somehow, we haven't cracked it yet mm -hmm. to um, make it happen. I, that just made, I hesitated a little because it made me think of Anita Hill and uh, the Clarence Thomas Hill yeah, hearings, 1991. I kept calling that the big one on sexual harassment. I was so thrilled and, you know, I, I said the ERA needs a big one like that, something to happen like that. And it made a tremendous difference and there was no going back to what we, how we treated sexual harassment before it. Mm. But even that, I think the reverberations probably just, it's, always happens, but die down a bit. Now there's the new movie, Anita Out, which somebody saw and said is fabulous, which yeah. I really want to see, which may put some uh, more impetus into dealing with that. But the, the reality is that all of the consciousness raising, if you will, the awareness that we got about sexual harassment and the new uh, regulations, EEOC mm -hmm. standards, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, do have to always, and they're just one example of all the many things that we have to keep pushing mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. even when after a big, I say win, bless Anita Hill for doing what she did, our loss was that he got confirmed, oh, which is just, yeah. oh, I don't, don't, well, don't, don't, don't get me started. I'm, I'm but, worried, I'm, you know, it, I worry a little bit about having a big moment of the kind that we had with Anita Hill's. Yeah. situation because really the nation put a woman on the sacrificial altar. Oh yes. <laughs> it looked that way on television, you know, um, in order to raise enough consciousness that, you know, grabbing a woman's yes, butt when she's running down the hallway, which is just rude, um, actually became mm -hmm. 
known to be a bad thing to do. I don't. I hope we don't have to do that. Right. Um, you know, it seems in our history that we are always putting someone on the altar. We're always sacrificing a lamb, um, whether it's you know 